Hi, in today's video I'm going to be making um, a fabric mat for my scan and cut machine to sit on on my desk and I'm going to be using an inbuilt quilting pattern that's in the machine. So to save some time I've already made two blocks. I need three blocks that are seven by seven inches and this is the design that I've chosen to use from the machine. If you're an experienced quilter or sewer, then this video is probably going to be no help to you whatsoever. But if you are a new scan and cut user or you're new to sewing, then I'm just going to show you the process that I'm working through. I'm not a quilter at all. I'm not even really a sewer. I can sew and make small home decor projects, things like I show you on my YouTube channel, but I'm not really an accomplished sewer. So... This is just how I'm doing it. I'm just winging it basically. I've measured the area and I think I'll need three seven by seven inch squares. Then I'm going to quilt it and I'm gonna put some bias binding around it. So this fabric's all been cut on the scan and cut. And as you can see, there's no backing or anything ironed onto the back of it. And as I say, I've already made two squares to make a start so I'm going to make the third square and I've got my bits of fabric here oh first of all let me just say I'm using <clears throat> a very old grubby scan and cut mat this is the, the the very first mat I ever got with my CM600 you can see on the back it's all patched up and taped up but it's still got life in it so I've not thrown it away <coughs> But what I have done is applied one of these high tack adhesive sheets that you get with your machine. Now obviously I've changed my machine to the CM900 this year and I got one of these with this machine and I already had one from my 600 that I'd never used. So I've peeled, followed the instructions that you get with it, peeled the backing off and I've stuck it to this mat. Patterns. I'm going to go into pattern, onto page two, to the quilt blocks. I'm going to go into the first set of quilt blocks and it's this second pattern along here, PA-A002 that I'm using and the size is seven inches so I'm going to take this down to seven inches And that should be the finished size block. These blocks actually measure about seven and a half by seven and a half. So obviously you need to sew them together and that will make them slightly smaller. So I'm going to say OK. The white sections of the block here are what I'm cutting in the pale pink. And the green sections are what I'm cutting in this polka dot. So I'm going to bring the white sections onto the mat first. Not sure how well you're going to see this. So we've got A, B and another B. So I'm going to choose A, say OK. Now it knows that I need four, so it's automatically telling me it's going to put four on the mat. And I'm going to say set. Then I'm going to go back to add, go to B say OK and it says I need two of these and set and add and go back to the last part, say OK and again it says I need two and set. So that's all the elements I need to cut in my pale pink fabric. So I'm going to, so I've got the cover off the mat <clears throat> and this is the pink fabric that I'm going to use. And I've got some bits of scraps here, so I'm going to try and see if I can get the bits I need out of this, these two bits of scrap. So I might have to manoeuvre them around, but that's the beauty of having a scan and cut because you can do a background scan. So they're the two pieces of fabric on the mat. I'm just going to rub it down. I'm 
load it into the machine and the first thing I'm going to do is a background scan. Okay, so you, you probably won't be able to see this, but I'm going to, I can see the fabric now on the mat. So I'm just going to manoeuvre some of these around and get them. So hopefully I can get them cut from these two pieces of scrap fabric. I'm going to rotate this one. So I'm going to go into the top left icon, then into the icon here that's got the up and down arrows. And I'm going to rotate it and then maneuver it into place. Then I'm gonna say okay and go back to the mat. I'm gonna zoom in and just move these around so that I can hopefully get them cut. So I think that's gonna be okay. Now, this machine definitely cuts differently than my CM600 did. And it definitely cuts differently with fabric. From the last two blocks, I found that I've had to have my blade set on five and I've had to have my cut pressure set on five as well, which is totally different than my CM600. So we'll see how we go with this and hopefully it will cut out these shapes. So I'm going to say OK now and cut. By the way, I'm not drawing the seam allowance on because I've got a quarter inch foot, but if you wanted to draw the seam allowance and then cut it, you would just hit draw here. I'm just going straight to cut. Okay, so I'm going to say select next part now and then I'm just going to unload for a minute. Just getting a small pair of scissors because sometimes I've found that you just have to snip the odd thread. So I'm just going to peel this fabric back. And start peeling these off. they've all come off okay. Okay, so that's how it's looking. So now that's the waist. So I'm going to throw that away because I don't need it. And I've got a bit of fabric left there that I can use again. So now I'm going to go on to the second part. So bring the machine back in. So I'm going to go come on to the parts that are in green here now and do the same thing. So I'm going to select the first one, say OK and set, go back to add, <coughs> select the second one, say set, go back to add and add the last one. And that's it, they're the, part, the parts I need for this fabric.
So it looks as though I only need a piece that's maybe about six by nine. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this fabric down. I'll cut it about seven and I think I'll just cut it to be about 12. So I'm going to put this on the mat. Doesn't matter if it goes over the edge of your cuttable area. Smooth that down. And again, I'm cutting this from the right side of the fabric. If you were drawing the lines on, you turn your fabric over, draw your seam lines on and then cut. Again, I'm going to do a background scan and then I can position the shapes on this fabric. Again, I'm just going to turn some of these around because my fabric isn't directional and it hopefully you know will just save a little bit of fabric. I'm going to say okay <clears throat> and cut. And now I've finished because I've done both sets of colours. So this time I'm going to say finish and unload the mat. So now this one's just caught on a little thread here. So I'm just going to cut the thread. So there are all the parts for this one now. And as you can see, the mat's in a right old state. It's got bits of fab fibre on it and everything. If you can get a grip of any and lift them off, then lift them off. But don't dig at this mat because you'll dig into this plastic, this adhesive top layer. So I'd just leave them on. And then I always put the covers back on mine and I store them flat in a drawer. So, there's the waste from this one. So I can cut that down and use that on another project. So I'm just going to go back. Okay to delete all patterns and go back to patterns and back into the quilts. And that's the design. Now it may help to take a picture on your phone of how it's laid out that's what I did or you can just keep this on your screen it depends if you're cutting and assembling at the same time if you're just cutting and then assembling another time if you take a picture on your phone it'll just help you to see how the design goes together so the way that I did mine was I laid out my pieces as it showed me on here so a plain one in each of the four corners <clears throat> and the 
patterned one in the middle. This is only roughly and then just follow the diagrams. So this one has to be that way. Then the next one goes that way. Don't worry about any stray threads. That's when you pull it off the sticky mat. They'll be caught up in the seam allowance. And then this one goes that way. So that's the pattern. So how I did mine now was literally I left this on my table next to my sewing machine. And I sewed the half square triangles together first. So right sides together, lined up the edges and sewed them with a quarter inch. And I did all the half square triangles first. Then I came back and I put them into the design and then I sewed row by row. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So I've got my machine set up for quilting and I've got it set to a quarter inch uh, stitch. And I've just got plain white embroidery thread <coughs> in my machine. I've got to the right of me here, I've got the fabric that I've just cut all still lined up. So all I'm going to do now, as I say, is put the right sides together <coughs> and sew with a quarter inch seam. And I burnt three of my fingers whilst cooking about a week ago and I can't actually feel the tips of three of my fingers so I noticed when I was trying to sew those other two blocks the other night it was difficult for me to actually feel the fabric So I've got my quarter inch foot on. I'm just going to put this into the machine, line the fabric up with the edge of my foot and just sew a straight line. As I say, if you're a quilter, don't watch this. This is just how I'm doing it as a novice. I'm stopping when I get near the end and I'm going to go to the next quarter inch triangle and I'm going to do the same thing, line them up. You can pin these or clip these if you want, but <clears throat> they're only small pieces. I didn't really find it necessary to have to do that. And then I'm just going to carry on. So I'm kind of chain piecing them together. all I'm doing lining up the edges and then just putting them under as I say I can't actually feel the ends of my three of my fingers so it's a bit it's a bit weird but I'll do my best once you get it going if you you know unsure just start with your needle down and then just adjust your fabric. And the last one now. <clears throat> and I have to say, I usually always press my fabric before I start sewing, but because this was going through the scan and cut machine, I've not pressed it because I thought it might get crumpled anyway because I was using bigger pieces than the mat sometimes so I 
Okay, so that's my pieces all chained together. So I'm just going to cut them apart and then I'm going to press them and sew the rest of it together. Okay, so I'm going to cut these apart now. Got them all turned over with the dark side facing up and I'm just going to give them a quick press and then fold it out and press. I'm trying not to stretch the fabric while I'm doing this, trying to keep it so it all stays <clears throat> in shape. And this little iron is a John Lewis iron here in the UK. This is a travel iron I've had this year and this is what I always use for my sewing. And my little ironing board is from Ikea and I've actually got a newer one but the cover broke on it so I've gone back to the old one which is all full of spray starch and heat and bond and all sorts of things. So now I'm just going to give these squares a little quick press. leave my eye in there and then I'm going to lay them out again like I did before so that I know I'm sewing them together and what you might find is you might have some little bits that stick out here these are from the when the scan and cut cuts them I'm just going to snip those off like little ears little dog ears okay so there's the design all laid out on the table so I'm now going to sew this one to this one and then to that one, I'm going to do them in rows. So again, right sides together, line them up. Because they've been cut on the scan and cut for you, they should all line up perfectly. that's that. Now I'm going to take the other plain corner and put that one right sides together and that will be my first row. There we go that's the first row so I'm going to put that back down then I'm going to do exactly the same so I'm going to get my next row and sew the first two pieces together and work my way along. Okay so there my three rows now so I'll show you how I did mine starting with the top row I turned it over and I ironed the seams going outwards <clears throat> on the top row. Then on the middle row, I ironed the seams going inwards on the center block. And then on the last row, I ironed them going out again. So I'm just going to trim any, away any of these loose threads. And then now I'm going to sew the three rows together. Now because I've ironed these seams in opposite direction, these seams should kind of nest together. 
So I'm going to put the two seams together. You can see this seam's going this way and on the back it's going that way. And then line up my outside edge. I'm going to put that into the machine and then stop with the needle down and just make sure everything's all lined up. As I say, I'm only a novice at this. So, you know, this is just how I do it. But for anybody that's new, it may help you. that's the top two rows and then I'm just going to apply the bottom row so that's how that goes so right sides together turn it round and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I say I'm going to nest the seams together and line up the edge of the fabric Stop with the needle down and then line up the edges. So that's how we're looking. Okay, so that's the block. That top one's not, it's a little bit off, so I might, but I'll probably lose that within within the um, binding anyway. So I'm just going to turn it over and press it and I'm going to press the seams going out, I think, because that's the way they seem to want to lie. Okay, so this block's not turned out as well as the other two. I've gone a little bit off on here, but there are all the three blocks. As I say, that'll probably be hidden anyway when I sew these together and put some binding on it. So I'm going to put these two right sides together and sew them, and then put those two right sides together and sew them. So that's how that's looking. I'm just going to put the last one on press it all and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it next. So there's my block. So I've got a piece of plain white fabric that I'm going to use as my backing. I've got a piece of wadding. And I've got my quilt pieces. Now the wadding and the backing are far bigger than what I actually need. <clears throat> so I'm just going to trim them down a little bit, but I'm going to still leave them slightly bigger and then I'm going to quilt it and once I've quilted it I'll just trim up the edges and make it the size it should be and I'm going to bind it with some plain white bias binding. So I'm going to use some fabric glue to stick this to the wadding. This is a spray adhesive stick and, spray, stick and spray for fabric, but you can use anything you want. I'm just going to give it a light spray because I don't want it all over my desk. I 
think I might actually stick this to the backing as well. I'm going to trim this down but still leave some overhang for now just to get rid of some of the bulk. I'd rather have it bigger than be too small. So that's how it's looking now. So that's the three layers all sandwiched together and then it needs quilting. Now you could just free motion quilt it, you could sew lines on your sewing machine. I'm thinking I might try and quilt this on the embroidery side of my machine. Never done anything like this before, so I'm going to try it. Could be a horrible fail, but you never know. So that will be the next part of the video. Okay, so here's my little mat now all quilted if you want to see how I quilted this have a look in the Janome playlist it's part three of the Janome series so now I'm just going to trim this up so that it's seven by 21 and then I'm going to be ready to bind it so here it is all trimmed up now and I'm not going to add any borders because I literally only want it just so the machine sits on it. I don't want anything overhanging, taking up space on my desk. I just want to be able to sit the machine on it so that I can slide the machine in and out of the way when I'm working. On my other desk, the machine used to slide freely, but on this desk, it doesn't, it kind of grabs. So I thought if I put it on a little mat and then I can just, you know, push it backwards and forwards out of the way. So I'm just gonna add some white bias binding. I just thought I'd show you the back. Look how beautiful my machine embroiders. Now, again, as I say, if you're a quilter, please don't watch this, but this is just how I'm doing it. Now, normally I know, I think you would add your bias binding from the front and fold it over and then hand sew it on the back. I'm not a hand sewer, so I'm going to start mine on the back and I'm going to sew it down then I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to top stitch it on the front with the machine it's only going to be under there no one's going to see it if it was a, a quilt I was making for myself or for a gift or something like that I would probably do it you know on the front and hand sew it on the back but I'm not so what I've done I've got some bias binding I've folded in the end about I don't know half an inch something like that and I'm just going to start somewhere in the middle and I'm just going to line up the edges and I'm going to clip it in place. And when I get to the corner, I'm going to use my little so as measuring tool and I'm going to set this for a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to mark in each corner at a quarter of an inch and then hopefully what I've got planned for my corners should work out. I'm just making, this is one of those airy erasable pens, so I'm just using my and making a mark. So I'm going to keep coming along and then when I get to that quarter inch, I'm going to stop sewing at that point. I can see it through there. I'm going to actually stop at that point and then what I'm going to do is fold the bias binding up like that on that point and then back down and start sewing again and that will hopefully hopefully give me nice mitered corners but I'll show you when I get to the machine so I'm just gonna 
put that clip in for now just up to that point and then I'm going to start sewing down this fold line. So I'm on a regular straight stitch with the needle in the middle. I'm just going to do a few stitches, go backwards and then follow this fold line all the way down until I get to that point I've just marked. So I'm just going to remove this clip I'm just going to turn the speed down because it's still on high from when I was doing the embroidery. I'm going to take this clip out. I can see through this bias binding where that purple mark is. I'm going to try and stop directly in the middle of that mark. So I'm going to a few back, back stitches. And then take that out. So that's how we're looking. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fold this bias binding up on that mark. So it goes on an angle and then I'm going to fold it back down so the edge lines up with the edge of here again. So I've got it lined up on the top and I've got it lined up there and I'm going to start sewing on that mark I can see through there on this seam if that makes sense. If you want to put a clip in it to hold it you can do but I don't know it might just get in your way. So you just slide your needle in, make sure this is all lined up again down the edge and start sewing. Do a few back tacks and then keep coming down, come all the way down. Just going to remark it so I know which is a quarter. So where the cross meets is exactly a quarter of an inch. And that's where I need to stop. Do a few back stitches and take it out and I'm going to do exactly the same thing so I'm going to fold it up so I get an angle and then fold it down So it lines up flush and it lines up flush here and again put a pin in it or a clip if you want to and sew down and I'm going to do that on all four corners and then I'll be back. Okay so I'm getting back to near where I started now I'm just going to put the bias binding just past where I started. And then I'm going to sew straight along. Okay, so that's how it's looking now. I'm just going to trim off some of these threads. So what's going to happen now, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to sew a top stitch along this edge. But because 
I've done these corners. When I fold these over and then bring this over, I should have a perfectly mitered corner. I'm going to do that all the way around. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm, go I'm going to, probably going to clip it in place to try and get the bias binding as straight as possible. So I've got a combination of pins and clips in it. And now I'm just going to sew as close to the edge of this bias binding as I can all the way around to this open edge, not the folded edge, all the way around. So here it is all finished. I've not pressed it, but look how lovely that looks. And how lovely it is on the back. So now let's see if it fits under the machine. And it does perfectly. And I can slide the machine out of the way when I need to or when I'm making videos. And it just sits beautifully under there. So I hope you've liked that project. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.